On the upper levels, the fires had reached temperatures of 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures inside could have built up to 15, 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. Upon impact, 10,000 gallons of jet fuel shot through the building, pouring down elevator shafts and stairwells. Entire floors ignited in a raging 1,600 degree fire in mere seconds. At 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, it's hot enough to weaken the steel structure. Trapped in a mounting inferno, it would reach 1,800 degrees. High up in both towers, the raging fires were now generating three to five times the heat of a nuclear power plant. And the interior temperature had soared in places to nearly 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The nearly 2,000 degree temperature would eventually take its toll. Jet fuel had burned fiercely as high as 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but not for long. Corley's team estimates that as much as a third of the fuel explodes outside of the building. What remains inside burns for only eight minutes. The steel holding the tower up was reaching temperatures higher than 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit. The fire inside the towers may have reached temperatures of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. A fire broke out last night in the World Trade Center. The fire began in an electrical wiring closet on the 11th floor. The fire spread to six other floors. There was also no sprinkler system in the building. Even without a sprinkling system, fire department officials and building officials here say that there's no chance the World Trade Center could become a type of towering inferno. The building was designed to have a fully loaded 707 crash into it. That was the largest plane at the time. I believe that the building probably could sustain multiple impacts of jetliners. The designers of the Trade Center tried to anticipate every possible disaster. The towers were the first skyscrapers ever explicitly built to survive the impact of a plane. We had designed the project for the impact of the our largest airplane of its time, that is to take this jet airplane, run it into the building, destroy a lot of structure, and still have it stand up. After months of analysis, NIST concluded that the World Trade Center had no structural flaws that could account for its collapse. These buildings were sound, well-designed, highly innovative. Never has a steel structure building in the history of steel structured buildings ever fallen down for the reasons of fire. These outer columns, tied closer together than was normal at the time, could withstand the impact of a Boeing 707. Though the plane would destroy some of the columns, the building would still remain standing. Because the fuel, it just melted the steel. 